in the previous tutorial here, we learned how to match the texture view dimensions to be compatible with landscape. In this tutorial, we're going to be using those dimensions from the texture view to find the closest matching preview resolution. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay, so we want to find our preview display has got a certain dimension, I'm using full screen. So we want to find the closest matching resolution from the sensor to match our display. And this can be quite complicated if you set up your own custom uh, display resolutions. I'm just using the full screen display on the device in the hope that there's a direct matching sensor resolution from the camera that will support my preview. Okay, let, let's make a start. First thing I'm going to do is to set up a helper class just to do um, comparisons between the different resolutions from the preview. So. And I'll call it compare size by area. It's going to implement the comparator. This is going to be taking sizes, so all our resolutions are represented by the size object. And it's a utility, Android util size to select. Okay, now I need to override one of that methods. And it's going to be the comparator at the bottom here as such. Okay, now just need to implement that last part of the code there. So it'll take a long. That'll be sign none. We do need to cast here. Okay, so it's going to be left hand side times get width. It's left hand side get width times left hand side times right hand side. That doesn't make any sense at all. So left hand side, get height. So width times height for area. Now divide that by the right hand side. Again, we'll have to class that. So right hand side, get width. Multiplied by right hand side, get height. as such. Okay, so that's fine for that. We're going to be calling that later just to, we want going to want the minimum values that we feed into our list, pass down into here. Now I'm going to create a new method. I think I'll create it at the bottom. It's going to return a size and I'll say, what shall I call that? I'll call it choose optimal size. It's going to take a number of arguments. It's going to take an array of sizes. Array of size. And let's call it choices. So it's going to take the width. I did width and height. Okay, first thing we want to do here is to, is to create a list just to put all our acceptable values into. Um, let's create a list. It's going to be of size passed in there. Let's just call it big enough. In other words, is the, is the resolution, the field from the sensor big enough for our display? Let's create that from an array list and pass in size there as such. 
Right, now I just want to traverse through the basically list supplied to us from the sensor that claims contains all the preview resolutions. So we'll use a 4 for that. Set up size. I'll call this this option. And pass in the choices from the argument. Okay, now we need to check for three things. We need to check that the aspect ratio is correct, matches our texture view. We also need to check that the value from the preview sensor is big enough, both width and height wise, for our requested texture view. So let's do the check now. So first thing we're going to do is the option, and we'll do get height. We want to check to see if that equals option dot get width. Now this is the aspect ratio check, so we're going to multiply that by height and divide it by width for the aspect ratio check. Now that's one thing we're going to check for that that matches. Now we're going to check the heights match. So we and check for option get width is bigger than or equal to the width. And again has to satisfy that that value and do the same thing for height. Height is bigger than or equal to the height. A spelling mistake here. Okay, so if it satisfies those three conditions, we can just add it to our list. What is it? It's option. So hopefully we have matching aspect ratios and larger size, large enough values, preview values from the sensor to be supplied that will be appropriate for our texture view. Next thing to do is to actually get the minimum size there, to, which will be the closest matching size for our texture view. So first of all, just to check to see that we found things to put on our list. So if big enough size is bigger than zero. In other words, do we have anything in our list? If it is, we can return. We're going to use collections to find the minimum value in our list. We'll pass in our list. And this is, that's one argument, and this is where we do the now call our class compare size by area. So the compared size by class we created at the beginning of this tutorial will return the minimum size in that list as such. Now if we don't get anything in here, we'll just return a default, uh, the first item in the choices array. Not great, but we do want to return something as such. And we do need to return that. Okay, that's completed the choose optimal size. Now we can actually call it from in the setup method. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do first is to create a preview size member. Just looking where I can create that. I'll create it under camera ID. So it's going to be a size again and I'll call it preview size. Now let's go into our setup method. Now the first thing I need to do here is we do have camera characteristics. Inside the camera characteristics we'll be able to get the map of all the different resolutions represented by the preview, by the camera, by the video, by the raw camera. The list could go on. Anyway, so we, we need to create what's called a scalar, a stream configuration map. Yeah, and I'm just going to call it map. We can get that from our camera characteristics. Get. And it's called camera characteristics. Will provide us the scalar stream configuration map. 
So we need to get that map, and that contains all the lists of the various resolutions for camera, etc. Preject. Okay, so we've got that map. Now, if I just go into this position here, just above the camera ID, now I can actually set up my preview display size. It's a cool M preview display or preview size. So sizes for the preview. Now we can call our choose optimal size method. Now from the map, we can actually get the list of all the preview resolutions. So calling get output sizes and pass in the surface texture class, that's actually going to return a list of the various outputs supported for the preview, that the camera will support for preview. Now we need to pass in from the previous tutorial the rotated width and height. Remember for portrait, we're going to have to swap them around and provide them into these two members here. So one will be rotated width, the other one will be rotated height, And that's it. Okay, so hopefully we've pulled down the closest matching preview resolution supported by the sensor that matches our texture view. And our texture view here is full screen. It's like uh, 1920 by 1080p. So let's see what our preview size is going to be. It's going to be the closest matching value provided by the camera resolution that we want for our texture view. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is put a breakpoint here and run debug, and I want to see what actually my preview size is. So let's just run that. Okay, we've now stopped at this breakpoint here on preview. Let's step on down and see what we get. So we'll scroll on down. Here's the preview size here, and I've got 1920 by 1080, which exactly matches the full display size of my application. So it's exactly what I want. So, and I sort of would have expected that the camera manufacturers would have given me a camera resolution, hopefully matching what's on the display. That might not always be the case, therefore you would have to do more work to support that. But ideally in this Nexus device, yes, I've got a matching camera, a preview resolution, matching my desired texture view, which happens to be a full display. Okay, so that completes this tutorial. Basically, we learnt from this one just how to get in the all the preview values from the camera sensor and then use those to match our texture view by putting them into a list and matching the closest one while maintaining the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is quite important. Okay, so we've now got the preview size for this application. We can now move on with our development of the camera to API. If you want to get notified of the following episodes to this series or of my other tutorial series of the work I'm working on, click on the subscribe button down below. And if you want to keep updated with everything that's happening in mobile application tutorials or surrounding me is all my social media accounts, you can click on those if you're running, using them from a PC. So you can keep up, I maintain all those on a regular basis. So if you've got any questions or anything, you can look in the Facebook or get the latest updates via Twitter as such. And probably most importantly, if you're following these tutorials, you can actually view the video from my website. But not only that, I've got descriptions of the code changes I've made in the websites for referring to while you're following the tutorial. And you can also get the details of the code I push up to GitHub as well. That's all for this one. Bye for now.